Hey everyone, I am the Chosen One Legend here, as always joined by my co-host. Hi, I'm Kai, also known as Faskorine. And welcome back to the Bunch of Jokers podcast, where we talk Nintendo news and gaming highlights from the past month, and uh, Nintendo Direct! That that happened, didn't it Kai? That was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been waiting for quite some time for this. I mean, we knew one was yeah. probably going to happen in the summer, but like... You know, we obviously had a lot of speculation about it, and, you know, all the Switch 2 stuff is still up in the air, but, yeah, no, mm. they just, like, released, the, well, oh, I say release, they announced just a bunch of, like, good stuff, it was, it was pretty good, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of stuff for us to talk about, at least. Definitely, it was a lot more than I expected, which is very handy, because there's not a lot of other news for us to mention this month. We got, we got a few little bits, <laughs> and, of course, we'll be talking about games we've been playing, and you can find timestamps to all of those separate sections in the description below. But we might as well get started here with our direct discussion, so let's move on to the first segment of the podcast. Can't have a podcast without news, baby. And just, I guess off the bat, how did you find that Nintendo Direct as a whole, before we get into the specifics, Kai? Um, I think my opinion stays largely as it was at the end of the Direct, where... I wouldn't say it had... I, I think it had one of the least amount of, like, punch in it, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, however, it was probably the most consistent one we've gotten to date. Like, just across the board, really interesting games. Nothing that makes you scream, but a lot of things that make you go, Oh, nice, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. overall, like, yeah, very, very happy with it. Very positive. Um, yeah, all good stuff. It was a surprisingly strong direct for what is, you know, the final year of the Switch. We know that for a fact. We're getting Switch 2 news mm. next uh, within the next fiscal year, so the Switch 2 is coming out within about a year. It's like so this this late on, when you look at like the Wii U's final year, and they've got a uh, I don't know some Mario Sports game and uh, a, a Paper Mario game that people didn't like that much. It, this is night and day, you know. So it's kind of crazy seeing them still going so strong. I th I do think. For it to be like it to appeal more personally to us, it needed like that one big thing, a Xenoblade game, you know, or maybe Basically. even like a big, <laughs> yeah, a big Fire Emblem game, maybe you know, new 3D Mario. It missed. It didn't have that one major thing that targets us specifically, I think. But there was still a lot of big highlights. I mean, they started with a big hit at the start, the middle, and the end. So uh, usually you expect one of those, not all three. So we can't complain, and uh, I guess, really, let's just start off with the first of those. Uh, Mario and Luigi Brothership. Mario RPGs are coming back, damn. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah, it's very cool to see. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of confusion uh, surrounding it, but overall, mm. I mean, it looks good. It's a great reveal to, to, to sort of kick things off in a way. Um, yeah, great, great one. Great one to be on there. Yeah, it's like I said. I mean, I'm going to be talking about Paper Mario myself later. It's it's really nice to see them at the strongest they've been in a good while. And the series was basically fought dead, and for understandable reasons, we we don't know for sure who's creating this, other than people speculating now. But it looks fantastic. Like I think what really stands out to me is this is the best adaptation of the original sort of like sprite work and that that the 3DS I don't think quite managed to capture, where. I think it comes down to, obviously, visual fidelity of this is the first time seeing it all in HD. But the way that Mario and Luigi animate when they're doing the bros attacks, like, their bodies sort of, like, stretch as they do moves, kind of like a very classic old-school cartoon style. You look at the old, sort of, Mickey Mouse ones and that. It really brings it yeah. to life and gives it a personality that, like, sets it aside from, you know, classic 3D Mario or, or your 2D Mario with Wonder. It's completely unique, and it, it looks like... One of the most like visually impressive things on the Switch, honestly. Looking very strong. Yeah, I agree. It's nice how they've made it... You know, there's obviously a very, very clear graphical upgrade there. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the Switch. Yet it does still seem... You know, the style is still very clearly Mario and Luigi. Definitely. Um, they've not done anything major with that. So I think it's a really, really positive uh, looking thing. Um, you know, just tons of the stuff they showed off in the trailer was great. Um, tons of the gameplay, um, things like Bros Attacks returning is really cool to see. Um, yeah. You know, some of like the traditional ones almost. Um, there is one part of the trailer where um, 
it seemed like Mario and Luigi were being controlled separately. And I saw some people saying, oh, does that mean you can play two-player uh, locally or co-op or whatever? Um, mm. I think the more realistic idea was, oh, you can control each bro with a different um, stick on the controller for fixed parts of the game. That's um, true. It would be the either first... way, though. It'd be the first console where that's possible I mean, because it's always been on handhelds that either have just a D-pad or the 3DS with one analog stick. So they could do that with the modern game. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, uh, hey, multiplayer Mario and Luigi makes too much sense and it would be really, really cool, but I don't think that's what they're going for here. But either way, I mean, like, yeah, everything they showed off is still very, like, inherently Mario and Luigi style. It all looks yeah. really good, but it's also new at the same time. Like, it's impressive that they've been able to keep that style while upgrading everything still. So, um, really, this is sort of the best you can ask for with uh, with this kind of sequel. Yeah, I, I I definitely agree. I think it would this would be great if they could. I don't think it's going to be, but if they if they did make it multiplayer, it would be really great as well because it's an RPG where you you have those combat elements where you just need to time your button presses. You literally just need to Joy-Con each. You know, you, local multiplayer would be perfect for it. So, I, mm. I I it would be nice, but I, I'm not expecting it. But either way, this this looks promising. I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it up or not. I'm kind of tempted, but um, it's. I, it, the fa- it looks great, and that was like a way to start off with something no one saw coming, basically. No one was predicting this, and it didn't leak, which is a nice change of pace. So, uh, yeah, strong start. But, um, Kai, what, what's something strong. else you want to highlight from the Direct for us? Uh, What is something else from the Direct? That's a good question. Um, I mean, there were a lot of like standard stuff that we didn't really care too much about. Mm. Um... I mean, like, Nintendo Switch Sports was a couple of years late. It's um, bizarre. Because <laughs> why, why? That's weird. Um, yeah. We've already gone over a couple of the other random bits. Um, you know, Amogus, ooh, that was there. Um, we haven't even played any I guess map one. <laughs> yeah, no, we haven't. No, but just scrolling down the list, the next one I'd probably bring attention to is, um, is Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Right, um, yes. Which is an interesting one, because at first it was like, oh, that's cool. And I've had a bit of time to think about it, and I've realised it doesn't actually look that much better. <laughs> I mean, I assume more than anything, I hope it controls better, because I really didn't like the controls on the original. Um, You're no longer going to have to shake the But it was definitely roll, a strange so. choice. <laughs> that would be... Yeah, that's that's the, the big <laughs> thing, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, it was a strange choice for them to do um, Country Returns. Um, it is. Definitely one of the more out there ones, because I'm guessing it must just be easy to port, considering they already did on the 3DS. Um, yeah. And it's like, sure, come on over. Um, so, you know, that was there, but I think graphically, honestly, it looks kind of the same to me. Um, it's, so it's one I'm not of really those... sure what to make of that one. Yeah, it's one of those, when you, like, compare it back and, like, it looks how you remembered it, basically. And when you compare it, you can definitely see the upgrades and the changes they've made. But it's not, like, a mind-blowing change either. It's kind of, it's just the game, but now it's HD, so everything looks more polished. They haven't like completely redone the lighting engine or something, um, you know. So it's, it's not like you know Prime remastered to the original Prime. It's not that level of of a remake. And I think the other thing that hurts it is I think this is full price. And when you look at something like this mm. and you compare that to Prime remastered, which was like thirty quid, and I would have paid full price for that one. It's the value proposition's probably not there. It's neat. It's coming though, and if if people have not played this game, and you know, Tropical Freeze is on Switch, so yeah, give them the way to play another one with upgrade, updated graphics. Not a bad idea. I just think it's probably overpriced for what it is ultimately, but uh, better than not having it, I suppose. Yeah, it's nice to just be there, I guess, if nothing else. Yeah, um, and yeah, I think yeah, go on. Well, I guess whilst we're talking, sort of, you know, Mario vs. stuff still. Uh, we got a new Mario Party announced, Super Mario Party yeah, Jamboree, did. which actually looks good and makes me so salty that I just bought the last one and haven't barely played it yet. But uh, hey ho, <laughs> <laughs> that's life. <laughs> Wait, you you did you buy Super Mario Party? No, as in Mario Party Superstars. I never bought Super Mario Party oh, actually. Oh um... <laughs> right, okay, it's for the best. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the new game looks interesting. It's once again more Mario Party, and it's going down the Super Mario Party 
chain, I guess, because the mm. branding is all the same as that game. That's that um, game's old game. I mean, Busters, I don't really so. know what that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really know what that means for anything. You know, we've seen there's like um, they're bringing back some old stages. They've got the uh, they've got like a new uh, stage called Rainbow Galeria or something, mm. Galleria. Um, you know, they showed off new playable characters like the Ninji. Um, there's like a raceway track which reminds me of Island Tour. Yeah, um, I can see that. Yeah, so it's 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 a curious case. Um, and I, I think it looks good overall. Like it, there appears to be seven maps total, though I don't know if all of them are like full, you know, Mario Party games. Because like Island Tour, some of the games were like tiny. Yes, um, that's true. So yeah, it, it's just an interesting one. It's like damn, another Mario Party already. I kind of wasn't expecting it, but I guess it's very easy for them to churn these out. So um, you know, I, I yeah. guess it's fine. It does look. I think it looks like the strongest in the world, just because you have like original Super Mario Party, which had really good mini games and sort of brought in some more traditional board elements, but still didn't quite have the traditional board sense exactly like people wanted. Then you've got Mario Party Superstars, which is brings back classic Mario Party, but is also it's all old stuff. It's nothing new content, and it's kind of lacking in boards. This looks like it's getting that right balance now between adding some new things in there. Bringing up the creativity and new min like a hundred new mini games or something, but making it still mm. play like the traditional Mario Party people grew up with. Like this looks like the perfect sort of balance for it. It's it's kind of tough to say whether or not I'd be interested because at this point I can just play Mario Party online with you guys, classic Mario Party, and no one has to pay any more for that, and everyone has it. Because like we would play Mario Party Superstars more because we both own it, except. Not all of our friends do, so it's easier to just play classic Mario Party. And I feel like that's probably going to be the same with this one. Um, but if I had more people with me locally, I think I'd be more inclined to pick this up. Because it does look like the best Mario Party's been in a little while, I'd say. Yeah, I'm with you. It's one of those things where if you do have the opportunity where you know that you'll have people around for it, then yeah, go for it. Um, but, you know, it depends on how much you're really going to get use out of it. Um... So yeah, it's an interesting one. The only like real new gimmick they showed off for this game was uh, twenty player mini game mode, um, yes. where I assume they just put you into like, you know, they just put everyone into the mini games and then they look at the scores afterwards. Like a, it's a fairly straightforward thing to code. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Um, the fact that they are preparing to have twenty people on like I guess a quote unquote server uh, is interesting um but yeah no that's just like a normal mode that i guess kind of makes sense it's their equivalent of eight player smash now yeah it's I guess it's just doing something different with it who knows how actually long lasting the mode will be or if it's going to function i hope it functions you know without everyone breaking down online but we'll find out it's coming out in not too long so i'll be interested to see how the reviews go on that one but uh mm -hmm. I guess one of the other, let's go to like the middle of the direct, one of the biggest things we got was uh, a new Zelda game. Just Dance 2025 edition, yeah, I was I was hoping you'd talk about that, yeah. See now, that now was that one of both, the biggest ones, I agree. Now that we both went for that, I'm kind of wishing that we have like a Zelda Just Dance where you're like jamming out to the Zelda tracks. I'd play that. <laughs> I would spend good money on that, but, <laughs> but in the meantime... Oh dear. We'll have to, we'll have to make do with Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, playable Zelda two two D style, making tables. It's not what I expected to see from <laughs> Zelda, but it's kind of cool. It's very unique. Uh, how how are you feeling about it? Yeah, it looks cool. Um, I, I am I'm quite interested in it. Uh, you know, I think that the interesting thing is obviously the Zelda series is in a interesting situation, well it has been since the Switch came out, of like mm. man, we've just been given these two huge open world Zelda games, right, and they're like huge and take loads of development time and they're great, and obviously in the meantime we've had things like Link's, the, the Link's Awakening remake and all of that um, yeah. but obviously during the open world period there are a lot of people going, give us traditional Zelda like, give us a new traditional Zelda game. And I think mm. they've basically done it here. Like, this game looks so incredibly reminiscent of Link's Awakening. 
possibly even taking place in the same world. Although maybe we're unsure about that. It might just be the mm. same style. Um, but I think it's great how they have actually just done that. Like, not everything has to be large scale now. And yeah, they agreed. have just taken some time to be like, okay, let's do like a small, more traditional Zelda game. Except, like, we're on a, you know, we're in 2024, so we can actually do advanced things with this traditional concept now. Yeah. Um, I think they've struck a really interesting balance, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they flesh it out, because it looks good. Agreed. It's def it's clearly using like the Link's Awakening engine. It's probably been developed by Grezzo, who who made that remake, and it, it just getting a new 2D Zelda in this in this day is great because like A Link Between Worlds is one of my favourite Zelda games. You know, full stop. It's great. So I I really wanted them to sort of come back to that in some way. I do think part of me, the more I look at it, is almost a little concerned with the direction they're going on like the crafting elements. It's clearly Breath of the Wild. And take you know that approach to game design, not in the open world sense, but in the way of, hey, here's a puzzle, solve it any way you like, you know, by creating whatever mm. items you come to your mind. And part of me likes that, you know, adapting that to 2D Zelda. It looks like they're doing a very good job with it, and playing a Zelda to, to make that happen is a very neat, a neat twist on the things. But I kind of like, part of me wanted just to like go back to an actual traditional, here's a, here's a puzzle with a specific way to, to work it and you have to cleverly figure it out while for the, rather than you can do that or you can just create a stack of 15 tables and save the day, you know, <laughs> like the shrines. I worry they're going to go too far into that shrine approach, which I love for Breath of the Wild, but I kind of don't want to become that's what Zelda is. I kind of think there's a good place for traditional Zelda, but it's way too soon to say if they're doing that. And even if that even if that is the route they're going to, no, I'll suck it up. It's still going to be fun to play. So I, I'm definitely picking this one up. Uh, day one. This is a big hype one for me. Yeah, I agree. It does look really good, and uh, it will be interesting to see how mm. open it is in that respect. Because I, I immediately was thinking that it would be more traditional, you know, specific solution kind of stuff, but it, it, that's not really confirmed either way from what we've seen so far. Um, True. I think the number one thing for me is that outside of puzzles, um, we do see a good variety of things, because obviously the trailer had uh, you know, a couple of different things, but it was largely just tables. And I was sort of <laughs> yes. thinking, please don't have spawning tables be 90% of the game. Like, please just have it so that that's the example you happen to choose for this trailer. Yeah. But, you know, I saw the part where she summons, like, enemies to fight uh, other enemies and things. That's really cool. But, like, yeah, give us some variety that isn't just tables, because that's, that's the one thing I'm... I'm a little aware, you know, wary of, but it should be fine. I'm sure they've got it all in check, and uh, we'll probably yeah. see more before it releases too. There were some very creative like uses of like one of the enemies, just like a uh, in the 2D sections, which are back from a Link's Awakening. They had like you can create a spider enemy in front of you, so it moves and makes a web you can climb across. You know, so they're clearly doing some very creative stuff with it for like specific situations. So um, I, I hope it's going to be good. It looks good at the least, and um. I'm probably going to pick it up. There's a deal right now on uh, Switch online vouchers, you know, we get two games. And I'm like, screw it, going to grab it, might as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. it's. I mean, it's coming out in September, the month for every bloody game in existence is coming out. But I have to make do for Zelda. That That's a priority, as usual. But uh, <laughs> that's, it's looking good. And Kai, any, anything else you're spotted from the Direct? Uh, let's have a look-see. Um, I know you're hyped for Funko normal Fusion. stuff. Of course I am. Um, I, 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 we won't dote on this, but I do want to point out Stray was there. Great, it's coming to the Switch, but man, it looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not where I That's choose very to get it funny. if I have the option. <laughs> yeah, um, how about we end... We'll end it on the big one that we're both interested in. I'm going to mm. move... Skip ahead to the 100 line Last Defense Academy. Um, this oh, is me yeah. with my Dingle Bongo experience, and yours now, I guess, in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. It's made by the same developers um, who have, you know, already gone on to make other games. Uh, this does seem to be like Danganronpa art style, very, very obviously. Um, yes. Even the UI looks similar to their latest um, entries. Um, but then it seems to be a tactical RPG, you know, your Fire Emblem-esque sort of grid-based gameplay. Um, mm. So I'm very interested in that and where they go with it because the story in that could be impeccable based on the track record 
or it just could be like a nothing <laughs> game we really don't know so I'm, I'm really going to be looking out to see more of that because even more than that I hope that the gameplay is good um, yeah. obviously they're known for their stories not their gameplay so that's going to be the real big thing um, I mean, so yeah clearly... I, I'm very interested in it <laughs> yeah, they are clearly leaning leaning very hard in the Danganronpa influence, like even more than some of their recent other titles. You know, the host, you know, sixteen students. Mm. Oh, here's this quirky mascot character that's gonna <laughs> be bugging you. It's like, oh, hmm, I, I see what's happening here. They said the word despair in the trailer, like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> but it, it has I think they've realised that's such a key selling point for them, isn't it? They know. Yes, <laughs> they do. They know what sells, and and to be fair, like it piqued my interest. So. I do, like you say, gameplay could go either way here, so this is one I want to maybe wait to come out and see reviews, see what people think, but I'm interested, definitely. Mm. I've still got to get to uh, V3 at some point, so uh, it's next on my pipeline. So, uh, yeah, yeah definitely looks promising. And you said you wanted to end on the one we both hyped for, was that Kai? Yeah, so let's go instead to Metroid Prime 4. Um, yes, that's what I was going <laughs> to Which was the actual end. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll cover my thoughts on this quickly first, because I don't have many. I don't really have much of any interest in the Metroid series, particularly the 3D games. Mm. Um, so for me, this being the final game is like, yeah, it makes sense to come out now, but I, I, I could not care less. Um, so I was more going <laughs> to hand this one over to you and see what you thought. Yeah, it's it's tough. I, I think it looks good, but I kind of... Didn't, it didn't do much for me, and I think there's lots of people like freaking out. Like, I saw reactions like, "Oh, this looks incredible for the Switch." I'm like, "It looks good, but it doesn't look any better than Prime Remaster did, you know." And I think had that not came out, maybe I'd be more hyped. Like seeing like, "Oh, this is what Prime can look like," you know, not just stuck on the Wii. But it they showed off very little as well. Whereas I think for a game where you know we've known it's coming for like seven years at this point, you know. So we knew this was all on the pipeline at some point within the next year or so. It was pretty much a, not, a locking at this point. It was no big surprise. So for this to be the first reveal of it, I feel like they should have done more of a big blowout, whereas it was more of a teaser. And it looks good. Like, I think it, lo it looks promising that they're, they're picking up on story elements from the last games. Visually, it looks nice and there's a lot more happening around you compared to the other games. So it's all promising stuff. The, mu the little bit of the music we hear, you know, it's classic prime ambiance it's i'm gonna get this game that's almost certain but it just was very basic like it's prime it's prime and it's back and we're not going to show you more than that you compare that to like when dread was announced its trailer and it was like this big blowout showing like loads of different environments and samus using new moves we've never seen before and i think that's part of it is i'm more hyped for 2d metroid than i am for 3d at this point a, a new dread game would get me more excited so i like yeah it's cool. Yeah. I'm not that hype personally, but I'm going to get it and I think it's going to be great. It's just this I think this trailer was a kind of a basic way to reveal it after all these years. I don't know. So, I'm not quite feeling the hype like other people were, but it looks good, I suppose. Is my general impressions. Yeah, that's fair. It's just one of those things, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've never had much interest in the first place, so I really don't have hmm. much of a place to speak on this, but I wasn't particularly even impressed graphics wise again may maybe this is just me because I don't have an eye for graphics whatsoever um, mm. but I don't know I just I, I just wasn't particularly impressed because I saw people hyped about like oh when you're outside there's like a war happening in the background and I was sort of like yeah that's like games have been doing that since the PS2 I'm pretty sure <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This is just me being jaded, I'm pretty sure, because I'm not interested in it, and it was the final reveal. But anyway, let's move on to something that we that we are hyped for. Um, Absolutely. The, the big one the for Shire. us, Ace Attorney. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that Tales of the Shire, of course, the Lord of the Rings <laughs> game, where Matt later. gets to fulfil his dreams of, of owning a Hobbit home. Um, let's be real, I'm basically no, the height yeah. of a Hobbit, so uh, I fit in perfectly. <laughs> All right, hold it in, Frodo. Um, <laughs> so we've got here uh, Ace Attorney Investigations Collection, which is finally huge because <laughs> you know it's like, oh man, is this ever going to be translated? Maybe not. And then they just yeah. gave us both of these, and we maybe kind of could have seen it coming because you know they've been on a streak lately of oh, let's localize Great Ace Attorney, 
then anything let's, but uh, making well, a new uh, game, also, basically. <laughs> yeah, they're doing everything. They're, they're just <laughs> making everything they've already done in the past better. Uh, yeah. Instead of making anything new, because I think they've run out of ideas in the last couple of years. But I, yeah. I digress. I mean, I'm happy to see basically everything remastered and on the Switch now. It's great to see. This mm. does complete the collection, but obviously we felt like this had a much slimmer chance than the other games. So, really good to see both of them coming onto the Switch here. It is. Like, I kind of figured this would be coming at some point in time, but it's coming out like, you know, eight months, no, nine months after the. Um... Apollo Justice Trilogy, like, that's a quick uh, turnabout, I suppose, ha. But it's <laughs> much quicker than I expected, and I'm like, sure, just throw that aside, Capcom, I can finally play this entire series now. And people say these games are great. I think particularly, like, Investigations 2 is meant to be, like, one of the highlights of the Ace Attorney series for some people. So, seeing it brought forward, not just, like, looking good, but having options for, like, bringing back the classic pixel art if you like it, all these sort of like character galleries and music and stuff that they've been doing with the recent collections. They're clearly going all in and I, I, like, I'm i literally playing through Dual Destinies right now. I'm, I'm making my way through the series and this just means I don't have to stop. And hopefully by the time I finally finish these games, then there'll be a new Ace Attorney game so it'll line up perfectly because it's been working for me so far. And I, I'm, I'm eating good as an Ace Attorney fan here so... <laughs> Yeah, it's just like a constant, steady flow of it for you, isn't it? They're like, <laughs> it like been... every time you're about to beat one, oh, there's like two more that just drops. That's nice. Yep. <laughs> it, it's lined up very perfectly. Yeah, it's, I... it's looking really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I know you were saying see. that you might like even stream it potentially or something, because you haven't played these ones so and or seen them, so um, it's kind of be nice. No, to yeah, we'll see something about these. I'm fairly spoiler-free on them, so we'll see how the yeah. cards fall and... Um... Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy it's there. I like how you've got the new graphics and then can revert to the old ones. It's cool to see. Um, but yeah, just glad to see it all localised and, uh, and here now. So, very positive one. And I do have to wonder, is there anything else they can possibly remake? Like, what, what do they do Late next? Leighton versus Wright is basically all they've got left, isn't there? So. <laughs> Ooh, that's true. Okay, I'm thinking, thinking. I, I, I like a new one of those even. Just give, <laughs> I would take that. But uh, honestly, or, maybe. Or I don't know, Von Zeke's investigations, please. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> but there's options. Yeah, that's fun. There are many options. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to see. But um, it's looking promising, and like I said, that was probably that if. I should have mentioned this up front, we did a reaction to this, so you can check out on our channel if you want to see us getting hyped for this, and I think this got the biggest reaction from us both, like, it might very well have been what did it. Yeah. Um, it's just great to see, it's, it's, it's very hyped to see this one finally coming, that the entire series is there. Um, good direct all around, and I guess before we move off, I do actually have one thing I nearly forgot to mention, separate from the direct. Uh, we had a few other presentations going on, like Summer Games Fest, uh, Ubisoft, not really much to point out specifics on those that we'd have interest in. But right at the end of May, just after we recorded our last monthly podcast, they announced Astrobot getting a brand new game, and Kai and I are <laughs> prepped and ready to war for the time trials, I can assure you. It's... <laughs> yeah. Here we go. <laughs> but it looks great. Oh, have you checked that lately, by the way? I know you've talked to me since I just last talked to you. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting off. It's only been like a millisecond, so I can, I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, this is not going to end. Well, I'm I'm really looking forward to this new one, though. I still contest that, like, yeah, I I think the Astrobot stuff is is brilliant um, for various reasons. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing a second one. Yeah, it's. It's kind of like the first one was like, it's a tying game, you know, it's a packing game that comes with the console, and it's still one of the best PS5 exclusives. Not that there's many competition for it, to be fair, but it <laughs> it's great. And seeing that have the opportunity to like be fully realised into a bigger game that's gonna have more content to it. That we see like little bits of changing, like he has a little dog companion at one point. We see him like flying on like a PlayStation controller and, and a giant PS5. It just looks like it's dialing up everything the the packing game did up to eleven here, and it, it, it's going to be fun. Like this is coming out like right next to like the Star Wars game, 
and you know how much of a big Star Wars fan I am, I might pick this over that. Like, I'm generally still considering it. <laughs> just because the first game was so good, and this is... This could be, like, Game of the Year contender for me, like, no kidding. It, it's just... In between, like, playing these big epic RPGs or these, you know, intense visual novels, having silly, goofy platformer that's just fun, and it's gonna make use of, like, the haptic feedback and stuff, uh... Very hyped for this one, like, this... No doubt this is going to be a great game. And it's also going to cause me to cry as I try to beat your time trials again. But that's part of it. It's a package <laughs> deal. That's I have accepted that's what comes with it at this point. And uh, I'll take it. Yeah. It looks great. <laughs> Bring it on. Looking forward to it. Here we go. Who knows? By the time this video releases in a few days' time, I might have topped your topped your score, Kai. You never know. It's a... Uh, oh, keep an eye out. Sleep with one eye open, mate. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One eye on the time trial scores. But uh, that's that's basically it. Unless you have anything to mention from the other presentations, but I didn't really think there were many highlights for us. No, I had basically nothing, I'll be honest. None of it yep. was that interesting, you know. <laughs> it, it just, I, I don't know, a lot of the showcases just focus so much on, like, celebrities and... and uh, Cinematic I, I don't, trailers. I want to say this. Mm. It's going to make me sound like I'm, like, a sort of oh, Nintendo's the perfect best whatever. I don't mean that. Like, that's not what I'm going for here, but every other showcase seems to be so corporate-focused. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's a little edge to it that makes you think, you're doing this because it looks good corporately, not because people are actually interested. Um, hmm. and, and that kind of thing throws me, rubs me the wrong way, especially when some of the games they show off actually are quite good. But then they're like, oh, let's dedicate 20 minutes to this game because they paid a lot more to show it. Um, yeah. And also it's... here's Dwayne The Rock Johnson who's voicing someone <laughs> again. It's like, eh, I'm not that interested. Like, there's... like It's it's just insane how often they will focus in on, like, let's spend 10 minutes showing off the start of this campaign. Or, like, I forgot what it was, one of them. They showed off, like, this 10-minute or, like, few-minute-long cinematic for, like, these colourful cast of characters and it looked like it was going to be some sort of like Guardians of the Galaxy adventure game or something. And it's just like an Overwatch clone. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And it's all this time at the beginning. They spent so much time on it. And Nintendo are like the only company who get the pacing right for these presentations. Like, even outside of me being a biased fan who admittedly veers more towards Nintendo games than I do the other companies. It's just the pacing of it. Like, whether you like the games or not, they don't waste your time on them. They go ra rapid fire through loads of good stuff. They emphasise the highlights, but don't put them in there for too long. It's, it's, it all comes down to pacing, and uh, thank goodness yeah. Nintendo are still doing good for that because uh, otherwise our reaction videos would be a lot more painful. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a uh, it, yeah. I mean, overall, not the most interesting summer of presentations. But then again, that's sort of okay. You know, we've got big things coming next year, so. Uh, you know, it's cool. True. Again, more backlog time, and some of the games they showed off in the direct were really good. So overall, pretty positive uh, this month. You know. And speaking of backlog time, that's a perfect segue to our next segment of the podcast, Games Time Baby, where we go over any games we've been playing over the past month. And I'm going to start things off here. I've got two to talk about, and one of them, uh, you know, we, Mario RPGs are back. We mentioned it. I tried out the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door remake that came out, and it, it sort of was kind of an impulse buy. I didn't really intend to pick it up straight away, but kind of lined up right, and people are raving about it, and no surprise, it's a good game. It's it's a really fun, colourful game. That mm. being said, I don't quite put it up as like the masterpiece other people do, and I, I'm just going to get all my rants out at the start, because I feel like what I tend to do is I praise a game then rant about something for five minutes and it ends on that note and it sounds like I hate it. So I'm going to do it the opposite way this time around. But, um, dear lord, the backtracking. Oh, it's so painful. <laughs> Apparently this game has a reputation for that, which I didn't really know going into it. I didn't know much about this yeah. other than a few characters. And they've made improvements, like major improvements to it. But it's still so integrally in ingrained in the game system. It's like every area of the game is go back and forth along this path between a town and a dungeon a few times and they do that several times not to mention the uh oh the, the side quests the um missions you have to do troubles that's what they're called 
the, just mm -hmm. the most boring ass basic can you buy me this thing walk back and forth between roadport for five minutes buy a thing your reward is 30 coins which is what you spent on the thing you had to buy so the entire quest was pointless <laughs> and the dialogue's not even funny in them like it's so bad I, and i just didn't do them because thankfully you can not do them and you'll be fine but oh, it's it's so ingrained into it where it really is and i'll get to it later like there's so much love about this game but that knocks it down for being a great game to me like it's it's enough that it it knocks it down an entire like two points and like a rating score for me it's that in it's that ingrained <laughs> in it so uh oh it's painful and the other thing is like and credit to them they made some major big changes to this like there's a warp zone now where you can warp between the different areas which is great for like backtracking and stuff except it's still a slog to like walk down to the pipes and find them and then walk between them why not make it a fast travel option from the menu my rpg did that they allowed you to just go from the map and say fast travel to here like i can't think of any reason why they couldn't have just added that for the remake like they did for my rpg it's kind of baffling that they didn't go further with some of these changes things like inventory as well being able to only carry so many items both in your pocket and in the store itself like just let you have an unlimited inventory with the amount of items they throw at you it's there are more changes they could have made that hold it back from being a masterpiece for me but breather let's let's get to the positive stuff now because despite all of that it's it's paper mario it's bright and colorful it's very funny like the writing is god tier as you would expect bowser's like his writing is great there the, all the different companions you get like straight goombella was basically the one i had the entire game because i could use tattle ability but she always had something mm -hmm. funny to say about the area we're in or whatever like it's all top tier stuff it's 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 kind of nice to just have a more chill basic rpg after playing you know like a big long xenoblade and that where it's all to do with like you know the battle timings working out which badges you want to equip allows you to completely change how you play the game like everyone's gonna have a different experience depending on how they want to play it out and each like each chapter like completely changes the tone of the game whether it's like you're in a wrestling arena and it's sort of like this competitive sport or suddenly you're on a murder mystery on the train you know great escape kind of thing like they completely do all sorts of ways to mess with you and keep you on your toes you never know what the game's gonna throw at you next and it's just it's just fun really when it comes down to it and it like visually on switch this is an incredible looking game they kind of like mixed sort of like uh what do you call it like um the traditional style of the original game but then upgraded it to sort of compare it on the level of the modern paper mario games down to the soundtrack where they have like a battle remix for that's different for each area you're in of the game and those are incredible so full, full credit to them they went the extra mile to make this not just a fancy port it's a full-on remake that brings this game to the switch in a very beautiful way and it's so fun to play shame about the backtracking but hey it's it's a good game at its core and i know you've watched it kai at least so you know what i'm talking about it's uh it's vibrant and fun really yeah, yeah it's a it's a very solid game all round of course um yeah uh the backtracking is a big thing so i mean i it is. i feel like everyone once in their life should have to at least witness the uh the atrocity of the uh general white um situation uh, uh, that was in the yeah. original that you missed because <laughs> oh that would have been fun to see you go through uh, I might have actually however, given up yeah, the game no. I'm not even kidding <laughs> I might have done it <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a it's a situation I'm not sure why they chose to do that but I think I think one of my favourite things about the game is not only is it just a nice standard RPG but it's very easy in these kind of things for each area to be oh you're in the grass area, then you're in the mm. desert area, then you're in the snow area and the jungle area or whatever. And they don't really do that with this. They've got unique environments. Yeah. Um, you know, like first chapter being standard, sort of like, oh, grassy-ish, but then a castle is like, okay, traditional. But then the fact they go into things like, you know, the fighting arena and the sort of grayscale uh, zone or whatever you want to call it. And then, like you say, the murder mystery on a train and it's like... I, I like how they mix it up like that, rather than it just being standard biomes and boring plots. They've actually got yeah. very good self-enclosed stories in some cases. Um, so yeah, overall just like a really solid all-round game, I believe. That obviously does have its issues, but 
I definitely understand the hype around it. So it was good that you got to, you know, give it a go and see what it was all about. Yeah, like, and, and it's cool. I think the best way to describe it is it's just charming. Like, down, that describes, like, the characters, the little story moments, the battle system, and the look of it. It's all just very charming, and that, you know, despite problems, that doesn't let up the entire way through, basically. So I'm definitely glad they got mm. to sort of try it out. I think I do prefer the original Paper Mario a bit more. I feel like it's got less of the backtrack. It's certainly got it. I feel like it's got less problems, but when... I think um, Thousand Year Door has higher highs, and when it's hitting on all cylinders, like it's a great time for sure. So I enjoyed it overall. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's a it's a very solid one. What about you, Kai? What have you been playing? Uh, so I phew, which one do you want first, the short one or the normal one? Uh, normal one. Let's let's go with normal. Why not have some normalcy? Uh, okay. I mean, I've been talking about it the last couple of podcasts of what I've been doing on stream, so worth summarising here. Uh, it feels like it's been ages since I beat it, but I have now beaten Voice of Cards, the Forsaken Maiden. Mm. Um, now, so you've got about as much knowledge as I do on this, based on watching. <laughs> yep. um, but yeah, basically it is, you know, it's the sequel to Isle Dragon Roars, um, it's the same format, uh, sort of the same engine, you know, the cards-based stuff, the RPG turn-based, whatever. Um, so it was like, okay, interesting to see what they do with a second game in, in this now. Um, you know, very curious. And um, I was a little apprehensive going into it because the reviews on this one were significantly lower than the first and the third game in the series. Yeah. Um, very, very mixed. Uh, people saying there is really nothing new here and they don't really like it. And to be honest, I, yeah, I can kind of see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, as we went through it, like, you know, your two main components, as always, are um, story and gameplay. As a side note, the music was good as always, but they didn't really have many new tracks. Um, no. But yeah, like, gameplay, gameplay was good. Again, it was basically the same as the first game, except... Um, you know, you had party members swapping in and out through the whole game and you couldn't change their equipment. So there was actually less to customise than before. Mm. Um, you were able to bring in one extra character to battle, I guess. But again, you don't really get much choice over that. Um, and some characters have, like, super strong moves that cost a lot more. And In terms of gameplay, that's basically it. It was the exact same as the first <laughs> game, apart from that. Um, yeah. So, you know, it was good, it was fun, like, I, I like the gameplay, so I'm not, it's not necessarily a complaint, it's just, there was nothing new to that, yeah, so I, I definitely understood the complaints of that, that if you didn't necessarily like the gameplay of the first one, then you definitely weren't gonna like playing it for another 10-15 hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I liked it, so it was okay. Um... The story. I guess I'm gonna go non-spoiler on this, just to be safe. Right. Um, but... Yeah, like, I I definitely wasn't as on board with it as the first game. Um, yeah. You know, they did a, a lot more in, like, the short story form, you know, isolating different chapters into their own little things. Hmm. Um, but it was very weird, because they never seemed to follow an exact format. Like, they kept on sort of moving things around and changing the length of things, which for my stream is very annoying. Um, <laughs> and then the stories themselves, I'm kind of mixed. Some of them were not very good at all because they were like, you know, <laughs> they were probably yeah. the span of about two conversations total. Uh, I, I don't know what you thought about the story, but I wasn't particularly enthralled by a lot of it. It was interesting, because they threw out some really interesting ideas. There were some moments that were at really great, some specific like yeah, story agree. arcs that were incredibly strong and up there with like bits from the first game. But it didn't come together as a full package in the way that I felt the first one did. Both from... I mean, fundamentally, it, it all felt very segmented, like you said. But then, even like how the story wrapped up at the end, it wasn't bad. And like I kind of liked the ending, but it wasn't it didn't like satisfy all angles really like it, it kind of felt like they had some good ideas and like spent all time yeah let's you can there's a section of the game that they really loved and wanted to put everything into and then they sure oh shit we're out of time um this section's gonna be just more basic it kind of felt like that uh it, where there are areas they designated more time and effort into than others 
and it kind of left it a bit all over the place. And like at, at the end of the day, like as a watching experience, I enjoyed it still. It's kind of a very chill game, just with like the music and the ambience of it and the aesthetic. It's uh, it was definitely had some fun moments, but there were sort of there were definitely stories that I just didn't pay much attention to because there wasn't really much to pay attention to within them. So very much a mixed bag, I think is the best way to put it. Yeah, I agree. It's um, yeah, I just I don't know. Some of the side stories, like the the last one that you do out of uh, out of the main story, I guess I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, the last one you do, um, yeah. I thought was like great. I was like, this is a really interesting thing, uh, you know. As as usual, it's Square Enix, so it made me miserable as well. But like, it was good. <laughs> Um, but yeah. then some of the stories through the middle were just so like lackluster, you know, so sort of basic, where mm. we were almost anticipating a lot of things to happen, and then it was just like, like I say, it was literally one conversation to introduce them and one conversation to end of the chapter a lot of the time, uh, with not a whole lot in between. And it is a shame because the premise was really good. Um, you know, I had a yeah. lot of questions at the start about things and theories and. The stuff that did con come true and happen, I was like, oh, that's cool. But then there was a lot of stuff that was either left out in the open or was a lot more boring than I anticipated. The protagonist um, was So double. overall... <laughs> yeah, the protagonist, I mean, I... Okay, I don't think this is a spoiler, so I'm gonna say it is like, it's disappointing how the protagonist was set up at the start to be, you know, sort of unassuming and... Mm. You know, that happened in the first game as well, where the protagonist is unassuming. But then they actually have something interesting about them, especially the way they set up his plot of like, oh, he's come here to, you know, do important mm. things or whatever. And then they just never touched on it through the whole game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, that, that was so anticlimactic. Like, it was. It's not even like a clever red herring, it's just, no, you, you know, it seemed like the main character of the story would have anything interesting about them, and they didn't. <laughs> Um, nope. So it was, I don't know, overall it was kind of disappointing. I think the story, even at the end, was quite disappointing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, I did enjoy it. But I definitely didn't enjoy it nearly as much as the first game. And there was a lot that did disappoint me. Um, yeah, I agree. But at the end of the day, I mean, it, hey, it was still a game. And I didn't actively not enjoy it, you know, I still, on the scale of, like, hate to love, it's it's like a plus 0 0.1, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we, I'll be interested to see when the third game comes around, I'm, I'm assuming you're planning to stream that somewhere down the line, so... Yeah, definitely... I mean, give it like a year and I will, yeah. Yeah, so definitely interested to see how that one's gonna scale up compared to the others. I know it's got better reviews than the second one, but compared to the first one, it's gonna be interesting seeing how, how it looks for the... Excited to find out. Yeah, so it's cool. And hey, I mean, from the developing perspective, these games seem incredibly easy to create, especially the Forsaken Maiden. So, mm. um, you know what? They were like, hey, we've got this engine. Let's just make a game with it. So yeah. it's better than the game not existing, I suppose. Very true. <laughs> still yeah, still enjoyable overall. From me. And I guess <laughs> then... We're going back to earlier of me living my best Hobbit life. I went all in on Lord of the Rings, but <laughs> kind of a different vibe from chilling out in the Shire. I went to go murder a bunch of orcs because uh, I tried out uh, Shadow Shadow of uh, Mordor, the Middle Earth game, which um, came out several years ago. I just sort of picked it up on sale on like an impulse buy and thought I was watching the films at the time. I was like, screw it, I'm in the mood. Let's let's go hunt some orc. And it's an interesting game because it's it's kind of uh, it, Classic uh, Ubisoft, I feel, it's been compared to. Kind of Assassin's Creed elements in a way, where you're playing a ranger, you're in Mordor, sort of as, as like, sort of Sauron, the Dark Lord is rising and his armies are beginning to rise up in power. And you're just going around taking them out, basically. Seeking vengeance and sort of trying to find out more about yourself in the process. And what it's very interesting where, at first, I kind of wasn't liking the game that much. And I was like, I'm not sure this is for me. But I think as I got used to sort of what the game was, a very different type to what I usually play, once I sort of settled in on what the game was doing, I actually had quite a good time with it overall. And it's, um, I think what you find is it's very segmented, where it's not just like you're following a lot of story along this specific arc. You kind of have different story missions that you can do in 
kind of almost any order, with different exceptions. And they each build up like different parts of you learning more about the lore. And as you build up all of those, then by the end you can go do the final confrontation based on all the different bits you built up. So it's very fragmented, and it kind of lacks direction, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, because it kind of lets you go about exploring the world in any way you want, almost, you know, Breath of the Wild-ish in a sense, you know, that kind of comparison. And it, it's fun, like, the combat at its core is just sort of, it's similar to like the Arkham games, where you're sort of mashing the attack button, but you can do like a counter, and you have to counter them as you're fighting hordes of enemies. It definitely grows as you get special moves, you're able to like, um, sort of possess certain orcs in a way and draw them to your side. And that really brings into the big unique selling point of the game, which is the nemesis system, where the orcs you're fighting have like a hierarchy, where some of them are chiefs and war chiefs and they serve each other and have rivalries with each other. And if you kill a certain orc, that means another one's going to come up and bring its power. On the other hand, if it kills you, then that orc's got a rising power and you're going to want vengeance on that orc. And I actually <laughs> feel like this game might have turned me into a bad person. Where, I, <laughs> after an orc killed me, I, I, it killed me twice actually, this one. I was full of so much rage. I, I was going to stop playing for the day, but I went out of my way to prolong playing, to hunt that orc down, find where he was, and murder him in a brutal manner. Because you can't actually <laughs> specifically kill them brutally. And I was like, going, yeah, suck it, uh, as I was playing. Like, uh, am I the bad guy? Oh <laughs> I think this game is actually... <laughs> turning me evil like that's a fact but it was fun <laughs> like, i am exaggerating somewhat you know you're killing monsters they're, they're they're orc they're terrible um disgusting things but you know it, it's it kind of had a really interesting system with that game where and it works both ways if you kill an orc it does come back and seek revenge against you so you're gonna get it both ways and it's a really fascinating gameplay system that no other game has done because they apparently copyrighted it but um, it's, it definitely gave it this really unique feel that's not like any game I've played. And having that sort of balance was really satisfying in there. And it's just kind of, once you get into it of like attacking a attacking an orc base, going stealthily through it and making certain orcs go to your side, and then having that orc rise up the ranks to infiltrate a different enemy. Like you can sort of manipulate the hierarchy of the orc, of the orc warlords from within. And it's so fascinating, so... It, it just kind of left me like, yeah, this is a really unique kind of game that I haven't played otherwise. And it kind of, it ended a bit abruptly, like, it, the, the, the final boss wasn't even a natural fight, it was a, like a quick time event, and it was so naff, so it kind of ended sort of, oh, on a bit of a wet fart, but overall, right. like, it was a really fun game, and there's a sequel which apparently does some interesting things. I brought it, it came as a double package, so I'll, I'll get to it eventually, but... Yeah, not, not a game I expected to be trying out anytime soon, but I'm glad I did overall, like, it's... It's a fun game, just um, expect it to turn you into an evil being who seeks revenge. But hey, you win some, you lose some. You know, it's it's part of the experience, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's part of life, innit? Yeah. Revenge oh, is fine, right? I hadn't expected it, yeah. <laughs> Sounds really interesting, though. I like the, that concept. Yeah, it's it definitely... And it, I think it's sort of it's a slow burner because you don't get the ability to, like, you know, bring... You can sort of... Essentially, you brand the orcs with your brand, and that makes them your you're on your side. Right. And you don't get that ability till like halfway through the game. And at that point, once you've upgraded your combat abilities as well, you can like ride uh, different beasts into battle and so on. It sort of really expands things, and it becomes a lot of fun. So it's one that sort of you need to stick with it, but it pays off if you do. So uh, yeah, definitely an interesting, interesting game. Yeah, sounds cool. And as for you, Kai, what 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 is your final one? I I do know very well what it is. I should say that. So yeah, we'll close it off because you literally played it with me. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the you're gonna need to correct me on the name of this. So it's Four Swords Adventure, but the link to the past no, da, 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 da. extension. Kai, Kai. Let me push up my glasses. Um, actually, Kai, um, this is just Four Swords that released with a link to the past on the Ge on the Game Boy Advance. There was Four Swords Anniversary Edition on the 3DS, which is the same game with some added levels. And then there's Four Swords Adventures on the GameCube, which is an entirely different game. But this is just Four Swords. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you actually used your normal voice on the podcast for once. I'm yeah, surprised. I thought I'd stop putting on the character for once and uh, just <laughs> move into my natural <laughs> self. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. So, an interesting bit of background to this is I didn't realise until we started playing it 
But I had the 25th anniversary edition on the 3DS, and yes. <laughs> I played a lot of that game when I was younger, like, because it was just a free one that you got on there. I played yeah. so much of it, and, Same. you know, because it was like, I was still young back then. I was terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was really cool to see that it was like, oh, this is now available to play on NSO with other people for free. Yeah. Like, y you know, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Um, so I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's like, it's very short, it's just two hours it took us, it, or less than that even, you know, and there's not like the depth to it, like Four Souls Adventures comes out and I hope they release that someday, because that game has so much depth to it, it's a longer game, it's, it does some really mm. clever things. This game doesn't really do much exciting, like, it doesn't blow your mind with any puzzles, it doesn't really use its four player, you know, each with their own screen to do anything particularly interesting. But it's just four people playing a Zelda game together, hunting for rupees, screwing each other over half the time. That's part of the fun. And, I mean, I don't mean to brag, but I did uh, <clears throat> get the crown as the one true Link at the end. So, uh, <laughs> go all purple. Right, all right. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I, I thought it was fun, though. You know, it was a little teaser of what Four Swords can be like. Um, yeah. I would love like a, either a new or a remade Four Swords on the Switch. Um, I'm good with either. But uh, yeah, it was a nice little one to revisit for me and then also just to play uh, in a group. Um, yeah, it was, it was mm. pleasant. Not much else to say about it. It's just nice the game's actually accessible now compared to like the old days where you have to connect everything with a Game Boy, game Boy cable, which who the heck even has that? Yeah. I don't know. It's it's so much nicer, so they, they really need to capitalise on this and give us, like, a new multiplayer 2D Zelda, a new Four Swords game, a new Triforce Heroes, whatever they call it, you know. Multiplayer Zelda is fun, so uh, hopefully they can make more based on this, because we had a good time playing it. Hey, the, the VOD's probably still up if you want to check it out, you know, so... Uh, <laughs> but uh, on that note, I guess that does bring us to the end here, so thank you for watching, and Kai, if they do want to check out some of your gaming content, where can they find you at? twitch.tv forward slash Vaskarine. Uh, I'm Yay. over there. Uh, I actually yes. have no idea what my plan is right now, so we'll see. I'll get it <laughs> sorted. Only one way to find out. Check it out in the link in the description below. And of course, there will also be a link to our friend Sam, our graphic designer, who makes our thumbnail and logo, so thank you once again, Sam. And of course, you can find all of our content here on Bunch of Jokers on YouTube. It's where like, our reaction to the, the directors up, if you want to give that a little look and Spotify for audio-only versions of our monthly podcasts and other gaming discussions. So, yeah, and we'll see you guys in the next one, I suppose. Take care, and goodbye. See ya. Yippee!